Can you take a moment and think about how was your day today? Did you? Well, you just made yourself as the object of your own thought. You reflected on yourself. You became self-aware. This capacity of humans is exceptional. Take this monkey, for example. She took a selfie of herself, yet she has no idea who that is. But when we look at our pictures, we can recognize ourselves. We can judge how nice we look. We can take pride in it. And we can feel sorry for the time that passed since we took that picture. Self-awareness is such an integral part of human experience. We think it's our nature. We are born to be self-aware. But ladies and gentlemen, our minds are not pre-programmed, reconstructed through social experience. I see this as an existentialist approach to human psychology. We determine who we are. In my research, I study how social experience leads to the development of self-awareness. And I'm doing this by observing babies and their mothers. You may wonder, how do we study self-awareness with babies? We use the mirror. During a mirror self-recognition test, we secretly put a sticker on babies' faces and we show them a mirror. If they reach for their own faces, not the mirror, we conclude that they can recognize themselves, which is the first step of self-awareness. Babies growing up in urban Western societies can self-recognize by two years of age. Recently, it was found that babies, same age babies from small-scale rural societies, do not recognize themselves. Look, this is good news because it's an opportunity to study how social experience shapes human psychology. So, I started a project with babies from Vancouver and China, a South Pacific island. By comparing babies from these two parenting cultures, I will be able to tell what kind of parenting behaviors support mere self-recognition. So my aim in this study is to understand how humans grow up to be self-aware. So we will uh, be able to learn more about how we become who we are. <laughs>